Hi, I'm Rick Martinez, host, food editor, and recipe developer at Food Network. I've spent the last 20 years traveling Mexico, studying the food, the culture, and the people. One thing I've learned is that corn tortillas are so amazing down there, and I'm gonna show you how to make them today. It takes a little bit more effort than going to the store and buying a pre-packaged corn tortilla, but it's completely worth it. So, corn tortillas are obviously made with corn, and this is the corn that they are made with. This is hominy or pozole. This is the dried form. It comes in a number of different colors, blue, red, gold, white. What they do in Mexico to make it actually turn into masa is it's soaked in calcium. That process is called nixtamalization. It basically just makes the, the corn really soft and digestible to humans. And then it's ground up and it becomes this. This is masa or dough. Masa is a Spanish word for dough. It smells like fresh ground corn, and it's literally just the softened corn, water, and that's it. And this is the blue corn. Blue is really beautiful. So if you can't find fresh masa, you can use something else. This is actually pretty common in most grocery stores around America. It is dried instant masa. One thing to note, though, is that you can't use cornmeal to make tortillas. It's a completely different kind of corn. If you try and um, make tortillas out of it, it's just gonna crumble, it's not gonna hold its shape. You really have to use the instant corn masa to make it. But I'm gonna use a pound and a half of this beautiful yellow fresh corn masa. And I have a third of a cup of water, but I'm just gonna start with about half of it because I feel like this dough is pretty moist. And I'm gonna put a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt. This corn has an intense flavor. You need the salt in there to be able to taste the flavor of it. And then you just wanna squeeze it together and just incorporate the water into it. You can kind of mimic kneading. Let me go ahead and add a little more water in there. So the thing that you want to make sure is that it doesn't stick to your hands. So if you need to add more water, then add more water. If you add too much and it's really sticking to your hands, what you can do is just let the masa sit and hang out and it'll eventually dry itself out. But you can see here, it's actually really nice. It's not sticking to me anymore, it's not crumbly. It's really soft and pliable. It's increased in volume a little bit because of the water. My dad used to call this the slap test where you know that your masa is done and ready to go if you can slap your hand and it doesn't stick. So now that this is done, I'm gonna divide this into little dough balls. Just kind of flatten it out into a disc. And then I'm gonna divide it up into 12 balls. So I'm gonna quarter this up. And, and then just kind of eyeball it three little wedges for each quarter. You don't have to be exactly perfect. If you have a scale, you can definitely use that. And I'm gonna grab my sheet tray. I have a damp towel because these will dry out very quickly, so you wanna make sure that you keep them covered with the damp towel so they don't dry out. So we just need to make little balls out of these. Um, no biggie. And as you're doing this, you'll notice that the corn starts to dry out on your hands, and you wanna make sure that you keep that. So don't be tempted to go wash your hands and get all this corn off, because that is going to prevent the tortillas from sticking to your hands. So it's actually really important. We'll get these covered. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to press the tortillas. This is probably the most common press that you will find. This is cast iron, some of them are cast aluminum. Uh, it's pretty heavy. You definitely do not wanna press directly onto the surface, partly because it's really rough and you'll never ever be able to get the tortilla dough off of the, the press. Some people use wax paper, some people use plastic wrap. I actually find that a zip top freezer bag works best. Basically you just wanna cut it to fit the, uh, the flat surface of your press. So for this press, you want to put the dough ball a little bit off center because the top of the press is going to press down and it's gonna push the dough that way. So make sure that it's, you're cheating it just a little bit off center. Put the plastic down, 
make sure there's no ripples, put that down, and then gently push down. Don't be tempted to exert all your force. And then you'll feel the, the dough kind of stop giving. You don't wanna put a lot of force on there or else the, uh, the dough's gonna come out the side. All right, ah, look at that, perfect. And then carefully peel the top off. Put the dough side down on my hand. And then, perfect. So this is one press option. If you don't have a tortilla press, you can use a skillet. What you wanna find though is a skillet that has a completely flat surface because some skillets will have like the brand name embossed on the back. You don't want that or unless you want the logo on your tortilla. So same situation, get your plastic. Get a dough ball, put it in the center, close the plastic, and then just press. Same thing, you'll kind of feel when it stops giving. A little more, all right, here we go. Peel the top, flip it, peel the bottom, boom. The third option, this is my pride and joy. This is a handmade press it actually presses flat. The top part is elevated just a little bit because of the hinge. So it's not going to flatten on one side and leave a, a thicker side on the other. It's gonna press much more evenly. This is the kind that you probably find in tortillerias and in taquerias in Mexico. But the action is pretty much the same. Just get your dough ball. This one, because it presses evenly, I'm gonna go ahead and center the dough ball in the very center, put that over. Same thing, just lightly press. When it stops giving, tortilla's done. Boom. My pan is preheated, but I'm gonna make sure that it's not gonna stick. So I'm gonna add just a drop or two of vegetable oil. And then I'm just gonna take a paper towel and run the surface. Make sure everything is nice and oiled. You can see little wisps of smoke coming up off the pan and that's exactly what you wanna see. All right, now take one of my little dough balls, put it in the center of the press, close the lid. Press down gently, perfect. Top off, flip. All right, there we go. And now directly onto the skillet. That's good. You probably want to use either a fish spat or you can use a silicon spat. You want to get something that gets up under there. If it starts to stick, you probably will need a metal spatula to help you scrape it off. You wanna let it go for about 30 seconds. You'll start to see the edges dry out a little bit. And don't be worried about the smoke. That's exactly what you want. All right, there. Looks really good. So you'll see some little toasted marks around the edges. I love that toasted corn flavor. We're gonna let this side go for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna flip it one last time. So in total, it's going to cook for about 90 seconds. And you see, it's kind of puffing up a little bit. That's the steam inside uh, the tortilla. We've sealed the two edges and now the steam is kind of pushing them apart. And now 30 seconds more on that side. I'm gonna grab my towel. You wanna to keep these in a clean kitchen towel. It'll keep them warm, it'll also keep them nice and moist. So these tortillas are gonna be a little bit thicker than the commercial or the store-bought tortillas that you're gonna find. Those tortillas are pressed with industrial rollers, so they're always gonna be a lot flatter. Um, but I like the meaty texture of these tortillas, especially when you have a really rich taco. You get all of that corn flavor, it's not gonna disintegrate. A lot of times the commercial tortillas will actually, if you have a really wet filling, or if you put a lot of salsa on your taco, they're gonna disintegrate. And that's what's really nice about these is they're gonna hold their shape.
The great thing about the homemade corn tortillas is that they'll last about a week in your refrigerator. All you have to do is wrap them tightly in plastic wrap, keep them in the fridge. If you make a lot and you want to store them in your freezer, just separate them with parchment paper so they don't stick once they're frozen. Keep them in your freezer for about a month. Let them come to room temp and defrost slowly on your counter, and then you can heat them on a griddle or you can put them in a low oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. All right, so I have cooked all of my beautiful yellow corn tortillas. And as a bonus, while you weren't looking, I cooked off the blue corn tortillas as well. And so you can see, they're just beautiful. They're so fresh, they're so delicious. I really like the flavor of the blue. It has like a, an almost nutty flavor that I really like. This corn tortilla, it actually almost tastes like popcorn. It's like so, so delicious. I am going to save these for my taco night, but I'm gonna show you what store-bought tortillas, and these are actually like pretty decent store-bought tortillas, but even still, you can see they're, they're a little dry out of the package and they're a little rubbery, you know, and I've definitely used these before and it's totally fine, but, you know, let's just look and compare. The ones that I made, they're a little thicker, they're a little more hearty, they definitely have better flavor. These, again, great in a pinch, but, you know, why settle when you can have this? I'm going to save these for taco night, but I'm gonna show you how to coax a little more flavor out of your store-bought tortillas. A couple of things that I really like to do is either fry them or toast them. So the easiest way to do that is in the oven. I'm gonna show you that right now. So you just wanna take a sheet tray, and what I do is just put, you know, six. If you can fit more, you can do that. I've got a little bit of veg oil here and you just wanna lightly brush the oil over the tops of the tortillas. This is a healthier option than frying. The tostadas are good if you wanted a, a crunchy shell or you, I've made shrimp tostadas with these. I think this is a really good method for seafood or something just slightly lighter if you were doing maybe a vegetarian option. All right, now I'm just gonna pop these into the oven, 450 center rack for about 10 minutes. All right, I think these guys are done. They smell so good. Totally crispy. So these tostadas are the healthier option. I'm gonna show you now my favorite option, which is fried. What you wanna do is you wanna take a skillet. I've got a cup of vegetable oil in there. You want it to be really hot, and the way that you can test your oil is you can just dip the tip of the tortilla in. If you see the bubbles, that means it's ready to go. So the oil is hot enough. I'm going to just drop that in. And you can see it's gonna bubble up. You wanna push it down a little bit to get some of the hot oil on the top. And we're gonna take this to the point where it gets nice and golden. We want it to be really shatteringly crispy. You'll be able to tell it'll start to get a little darker on the outer edges. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my heat. You can see the ends are kind of curling up. Give it a little turn. If your skillet's a little wide, you can always add more oil to it. You need it deep enough to like actually fry, but as it curls, you might have to push the tortilla down a little bit just to make sure that it's getting fried properly. And you can see it's sort of going a little more golden on the edges. I'm gonna flip it again. Ah, uh, look at that color. All right, that looks really beautiful. And now we want to put that on a paper towel lined tray. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a taco shell. So, so I've got my little taco stand here. So you wanna fry this side for, you know, five to 10 seconds, depending on how hot your oil is. Give it a flip and then fold. You might have to hold it down just so it, so it keeps its shape. And you can kind of open it up just so that you can get your filling in there as well. And same thing as before, you want to get this really nice and golden brown. But again, you want that crispiness, so it's better to err on the side of a little bit overdone than underdone, because nobody wants a soggy taco shell. All right, and then just let the oil drain out. 
and put it on your taco stand. All right, my favorite part. These are so amazing. They're so thick, they're so fresh. It has such an incredible corn flavor. It's like, it, it really does almost taste like popcorn. Mm. I've actually been eating them all throughout the shoot and I can't stop. It's kind of awesome. So I'm saving all these guys for a little carnitas party that I'm gonna do a little later with my friends. I'll see you guys later.